So, sir, I'm going to ask you first. You know, we've seen the mess that Bangalore was, you know, post these floods. We see that every year a lot of our weather patterns, the climate patterns, everything's getting quite bad. So, when it comes to economics in this country, in a sense, how much do companies like Ernst & Young and other companies that assess situations, look at the economic status, really take into that calculation what it means, the environmental cost? You know, because it can wipe out years of profit. One single event can wipe right. out years of profit. Right. So I think um, I would say that um, companies have become more aware in the last couple of years in terms of actually measuring the effect. And, and I must compliment Rekit being one of the forerunners in this regard. Uh, so companies are now today looking at their products, uh, you know, and their footprint and how it, they can mitigate some of the challenges of uh, uh, what we see today. I mean, we have seen Bangalore, we saw Florida very recently, and uh, it impacts everybody in the world, unfortunately. But, but what's more unfortunate is it impacts the poor much, much more. So I think companies are looking at, um, you know, manufacturing more sustainably, making products that are more sustainably, and there's, there's a lot of... Uh, interest among the younger generation in looking or, or buying such sustainable products. But the journey has just begun and I think the extent of damage that you have done probably is still not measured accurately. That's my sense because every year we predict something but we see much, much worse, right? So I think there's a lot long way to go. One of the things that's so clear now and nobody can deny is that what is not ecological in the wrong long run will never be economical. So when it comes to that, why is it that even now, knowing the threat of climate change, even our approach to tackling climate change is through a small lens of only carbon? We're looking at net carbon zero. You know, we're looking at reducing carbon emissions. We're looking at the whole situation like as if carbon's the only threat. And around this, we've started carbon trading. We started looking at technology that can draw down carbon. We're looking at technology that will reduce carbon. And all of this involves capital, money, markets, trade and it goes right back into the system that caused the problem in the first place. We're not, you know, nature doesn't work in a silo. We're not looking at climate change at the end of the day is just a sort of, I would say it's like if a body is sick, climate change is sort of the result, you know, that's the sickness. Right. But it's, it's biodiversity, it's species diversity, it's, it's actual health of the ecosystem that matters. So why is it that we're still on that in a sense, the carbon? Is it because it's so hard to change this economic model? I think uh, it, probably carbon was the most convenient way to do it to begin with and also, also a little bit more easier to understand, measure and appreciate. Probably that's the reason it started with. Uh, the other thing is probably, uh, it, see, it, I mean, the change that you're talking about will need uh, not just companies, it will need individuals, it will need the people, it will need politicians, it will need government, everybody to be in it, right? No, absolutely. But frankly, there are about 86 companies in the world responsible for over 75% of the emissions. And that is like a holy cow nobody touches. Everybody puts the responsibility on individual. You don't use single-use plastic. You don't do this. You don't, which is absolutely fact and we must. Right. But I can keep doing something as an individual, but what is the point of me cutting down my carbon footprint if those 86 companies keep producing carbon? You know, so there's a bit of an inequity there, and I don't think businesses have addressed that well enough. They haven't. I think, uh, to be honest, uh, I mean, uh, it's who will bell the cat is probably the issue, that somebody has to take that step. And to my mind, uh, that's, it's a very strong step, and it has to be probably taken by the governments of the world. As we are seeing in privacy, for example, it's a pretty similar example. There's steps to be taken. it's the government which is finally driving, and, and my response request to the government is to start there because people will voluntarily not do it. I mean, people have to be sometimes pushed to do it.